To figure out your skin type, think about how your skin acts without any makeup or products on in a few hours after taking a shower. If it gets a little greasy or shiny, you probably have oily skin. If it feels dry or flaky, you have dry skin. If you have dry skin in some places and oily skin in others, usually on the T-zone, you have a combination skin. If you have none of these things, you're considered to have normal skin. Knowing your skin type will help steer you towards products and treatments that will manage dryness and oiliness while effectively taking care of any skin concerns you have. If your skin tends to get irritated when you use certain products, if you've ever had an allergic reaction to a product, or if you have certain skin concerns on your face like eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, etc., you may have sensitive skin. People with sensitive skin can have oily, dry, combination or normal skin too, but may need to take extra care in selecting products and treatments that don't cause irritation. My name is Selena and in this lesson we are going to talk about skin analysis, skin types and skin conditions. Skin analysis is a technique offering many benefits and is useful in creating treatment programs for regular and chronic skin problems, as well as methods to improve overall skin care and health. Obtaining a better understanding of the causes and types of skin blemishes is what the skin analysis is all about. The therapist carries out the skin analysis after cleansing using a magnifying lamp to establish the client's suitability for treatment and to recommend the most appropriate treatment. The therapist looks for skin type, the skin texture, the colour tone, the muscle tone, the face shape, skin conditions, specific problems and for contraindications. The results should always be recorded. To manage your skin's condition and health, one of the best techniques available is a skin analysis. This provides a thorough assessment of your skin. When you determine what the challenges are that you face, you can offer treatment options and many benefits for healthy and beautiful skin. You may look out for scar tissue, broken capillaries, dry flaky patches, effulies, which are your freckles, crow's feet, fine lines, wrinkles around the eye area, the forehead, around the mouth area and cheeks, any skin tags, moles, burn marks, pigmentations, cloasma, your lenticles, are there any pustules, papules, open pores, milia and comedones. There are four basic types of healthy skin, normal, dry, oily and combination which is determined by genetics. The condition of our skin can, however, vary greatly according to the various internal and external factors it is subjected to. It can change over time. For example, younger people are more likely than older people to have a normal skin type. Your type depends on things such as how much water is in your skin, which affects its comfort and elasticity how oily it is, which affects its softness, and how sensitive it is. White skin is fair in colour, often with freckles, green, blue eyes, red, blonde, brown hair. It tends to be more sensitive to you via an external stimuli, ages quicker and shows vascular disorders. UV protection is essential in this skin type. Human skin colour ranges from the darkest brown to the lightest hues. Differences in the skin colour among individuals is caused by variation in pigmentation, which is the result of genetics inherited from one's biological parents, the exposure to sun or both. With mixed skin is a combination of some of the skin types. The shades and the sensitivity vary greatly depending upon the mix. Age and skin differs from white skin mainly in the colour, often oily but smooth and even in colour. 
typically classified by the Fitzpatrick score and the predicted reaction of the skin to sunlight and ultraviolet radiation. The majority of the Asian population has relatively darker skin, usually type 4 and above compared to Westerners. It's prone to hyperpigmentation around the eyes, temples, mouth and can occur quite easily. It can age well. Recommendations do not differ from ones for white skin, including high sun protection. Dark skin is a type of human skin colour that are rich in melanin pigments, especially humelin. It has a good protection from UV rays, tends to be more supple with delayed ageing effects. It's prone to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and keloid scarring. It's generally oily and can become dry. It should be treated as sensitive skin. Youthful skin is firm, plump and wrinkle free. It bounces back and heals with minimal scarring. As we age, a person's skin loses elasticity, a protein that allows skin to stretch and bounces back without forming wrinkles. As this happens, fine lines and wrinkles appear. With young skin, it has a smooth, matte, slightly pink appearance. It's firm and tense without any defects. It's resistant to water conditions, reacts well to water and soaps. It tolerates chemicals and mechanical and physical treatments, and it's not demanding. Dry skin is an uncomfortable condition marked by scaling, itching and cracking. It can occur for a variety of reasons. You might have naturally dry skin. But even if your skin tends to be oily, you can develop dry skin from time to time. Dry skin can affect any part of your body. There is a problem in the production of adequate amount of natural fats by the sebaceous glands. Fat deficiency contributes to dehydration of the skin that is insufficiently shed and constantly water is lost. Features of dry skin may include tin, light pink in appearance, not very flexible, may be flaky, might be discoloration and or broken capillaries. Poorly tolerates water and soaps, you may get that tightening, itching sensation easily damaged by weather conditions and ages quickly, particularly around the eyes, mouth and neck area. As skin dries, it shrinks and causes cracks, which can get deep, painful and even start to bleed. Cracks allow germs and bacteria to enter the body, which can potentially lead to a skin infection. When it comes to a skin care routine for dry skin, use products like a cleanser with a hydrating property that doesn't disrupt the outer skin layer. Tone with an alcohol-free toner to restore skin's pH. Target specific skin concerns with a serum. Moisturize with a nourishing, non-comogenic moisturizer to lock in hydration. Protect from harmful UV rays to prevent sun damage. Gentle peeling once a week, preferably an enzymatic peel. Moisturising mass one to two times weekly. Drink plenty of water, keep yourself hydrated. Use products that contain substances that strongly moisturise, rebuild skin's lipid coat and prevents TEWL. An oily skin type is exactly what it sounds like. Excessive oil on the face produces a persistently shiny or greasy appearance. If you don't treat your oily skin, pores can become clogged and enlarged and dead skin cells may accumulate. Blackheads, pimples and other types of acne are also common with the skin type. It's a result of overactive sebaceous glands. Its aging period begins relatively late. In old age, it does not undergo pathological drying. Usually after 30 to 40 years, it can change to a combination skin. Features of oily skin may include the skin being covered with layers of fat, may be shiny, grey, thick with little blood supply, with dilated opening of the sebaceous glands resembling an orange wood peel and opening comedones. Reacts well to water and soap. 
tolerates weather conditions well. There's one very favorable benefit for having oily skin. It ages slowly in comparison to dry skin. The reason is that the oil produced by your oil glands keeps the skin nourished, moisturized and lubricated while helping to prevent wrinkles and fine lines. There are various causes of oily skin, including hormones, genetics, diet and dehydration. The main principle of care is reducing the thickness of the stratum corneum, regulating the secretion of the sebaceous glands and improving skin blood supply and moisturising. Use soap-free, light lotions, cleansers, toners for oily skin. Use light creams for moisturising the skin and matte creams used for a daytime. When exfoliating, use coarse grained peeling if no contraindications are present. Use a mask for oily skin once to twice a week with the likes of zinc and copper properties. Avoid foods that increase seborrhea like sweets, strong coffee, spicy foods and cigarettes. Combination skin is a type that features two or more different skin types on the face and the condition of your skin may fluctuate between seasons. Typically, the combination skin type is characterized by dry, flaking skin on the cheeks, while excessive oil and shine appears on other areas of the face. Those with combination skin are in constant battle with the T-zone, which includes the forehead, nose and chin area. This is a difficult skin to care for. It has a tendency for oiliness on the T-zone and outside the T-zone, irritations to cosmetics are common. Incorrect reaction to water and soap and it's frequently sensitive. Those with combination skin may struggle to find the right skincare and cosmetic products. The key is balance. Finding products that offer extra moisture to already dry areas without increasing shine and oil in others. The main rule is to limit the work of the sebaceous glands in oily areas without damaging dry areas. Selection of products should meet individual needs of the skin condition. Peeling once twice weekly, moisturising mask in the dry areas, astringent and cleansing mask on the T-zone areas. The main characteristics of mature skin that disappear with age are flexibility and elasticity. Part of the skin's consistency gradually decreases. It becomes more fragile, finer, more uneven, and the dreaded wrinkles appear, which are accompanied by pronounced expression lines. The main symptom of the skin aging is dryness. At the beginning, only very careful examination reveals very fine lines. Dryness intensifies, leading to rough, dull, pale skin that is losing elasticity. More and deeper wrinkles may appear. Changes in the skin, such as broken capillaries and pigmentation disorders, become visible, like a cloasma, lentigo, etc. There are two types of skin aging, instringic, which may be genetic and natural aging, and external aging caused by external factors, especially the sun. As we have already mentioned, skin ages due to a combination of factors, both internal and external. Understanding these factors helps us to care for skin as it ages, reduce the visible signs of skin aging and prevent premature skin aging. The epidermis layers become thinner, the natural exfoliation process is changed. Reduction in numbers of the melanocytes, the pore protection against the UV. An abnormal distribution of pigmentation in the skin may occur, like your lenticle and dark spots. Reduced secretion of the sebum, less resistant to the impact of the environment and microorganisms. Decrease in the activity of your fibroblasts. Microcirculation disorders, sebaceous tissues atrophy, the wasting away, and reduction in cellular metabolism. Photo aging is premature aging of the skin caused by repeated exposure to ultraviolet radiation, UV, 
primarily from the sun, but also from artificial UV sources. Some signs of photoaging may include dry and rough skin. Wrinkles are deeper in the course of photoaging than in the course of natural aging. They do not disappear after skin stretching. Pigmentation lesions, discolorations, hyperpigment may occur like your sunspots, your liver spots, your freckles, etc. Loss of skin tone, decreased elasticity. Broken capillaries, spider veins, usually around the nose and chest. Redness and blotchiness. Small lumps and bumps on the skin. Overgrowth of the sebaceous glands and skin cancer. The external factors affecting the speed with which the skin ages are all due to one process, oxidative stress. Oxidative stress releases molecules called free radicals that consist of a single unpaired electron in an outer shell. Free radicals cause premature aging by damaging skin cell structures and breaking down skin components such as hyaluronic acid, collagen and functional elastin. Under normal circumstances, free radicals are caught and neutralized by oxidants in the skin, molecules with the ability to absorb and stop them. However, over time, the skin's ability to deactivate free radical decreases. The result is damage to all components of the skin cells. Other external factors may include diet, exposure to wind, pollution, smoking and alcohol intake, sleep patterns, stress, weight gain or weight loss, general health and skin care. It is important to prevent the early signs of skin aging by using the appropriate treatments and cosmetics. Once you hit 50, the menopause can cause skin to feel drier and lose firmness and density. Vitamin D is one of the best vitamins for your skin, along with vitamin C, E and K. Making sure you get enough vitamins can keep your skin looking healthy and useful. Vitamin B3 is a vitamin that works to prevent water loss and retain skin moisture content. It's also known to increase keratin. When it comes to aging skin, nice mead improves the surface structure, helping smooth out skin's texture and reduce the look of wrinkles. Green tea is an anti-inflammatory and can help reduce skin irritation, redness and swelling. Fluoric acid is an antitoxin that works to boost the effects of other antitoxins. When used in skin care products, it helps to protect overall skin integrity by reducing the development of fine line spots and wrinkles. Your diet and physical activity. By increasing blood flow, exercise helps nourish skin cells and keep them vital. Blood carries oxygen and nutrients to work in cells throughout the body, including the skin. In addition to providing oxygen, blood flow helps carry away waste products, including free radicals from working cells. Sensitive skin is generally used to describe skin with reduced tolerance to the application of cosmetics and personal care products. It is a common issue, but not a medical diagnosis in itself. The term generally refers to skin that is more prone to inflammation or adverse reactions. People with sensitive skin may have strong reactions to chemicals, dyes and fragrances present in products that come into contact with the skin. It has a low tolerance for environmental factors and cosmetics. Subjective neurosensory systems like itching, tingling, burning, even pain. Objective clinical symptoms as dryness, exfoliation, erythema, oedema and papules can be inherited or acquired, characterised by distribution skin lipids barrier. Caring for the skin by using cleansers and toners that are for sensitive skin and they have no fragrance, enzymatic peeling only when there are no symptoms of irritation present on the skin, Enzymatic peels with pineapple have an anti-inflammatory, antitoxin and antibacterial properties. Papaya can decrease inflammation. Ceramides hold skin together and form a protective layer to help prevent moisture loss and visible damage from environmental stressors. They also help to keep your skin supple. 
The peptides or amino acids that are building blocks of certain proteins needed for the skin, like collagen and elastin, using a serum or moisturiser that contains peptides can lead to firmer, younger looking skin and maybe even fewer wrinkles. Using calamine on the skin brings along powerful antitoxins which help the skin to regenerate, tighten pores and slow down anti-aging in the skin. Skin lightening, blemishes and redness can be lightened by calamine, which is sometimes referred to as natural skin bleach. Night care products repairing lipid barrier and antitoxin inflammatories and calm and mass one twice weekly to soothe the irritation. Dehydrated skin means that your skin is lacking water. It can be dry and itchy and perhaps still looking too. Your overall tone and complexion may appear uneven and fine lines are more noticeable. While dehydrated skin can be a nuisance, it's relatively easy to treat with the right lifestyle changes. Can affect any skin type, can be related to clients general health, lifestyle, diet and skin care, insufficient water intake, working conditions like air conditioning, heating and low humidity, and superficial lines present and broken capillaries are common. Gentle daily cleansers for dehydrated skin should be a cream cleanser, an oil cleanser or a balm cleanser. Or if it is a wash or a foam, we want to make sure it's not skin stripping and that it is actually introducing more hydration to the skin. Limit the caffeine and alcohol intake and increase water intake. Glycerin is great for the skin because it acts as a humectant, which is a substance that allows the skin to retain moisture. It can increase skin's hydration, relieve dryness and refresh the skin's surface. It's also an emollient, which means it can soften the skin. Pantanol, as the skin's protectant with anti-inflammatory properties, it can help improve skin's hydration and elasticity and smooth the appearance. It also soothes red skin. Glycolic acid offers the same benefits as lactic acid but at a greater strength than lactic acid. However, just because it is stronger doesn't always make it better way to repair scars, fine lines, skin textures and complexion. As we mentioned earlier, cinnamides hold skin together and form a protective layer to help prevent moisture loss and visible damage from environmental stressors also helps to keep your skin supple. Essential fatty acids like omega-3s and omega-6s are the building blocks of healthy cell membranes, help produce the skin's natural oil barrier, critically keeping the skin's hydrated, plumper and younger looking too. Broken capillaries are enlarged blood vessels just beneath the surface of the skin that look like bright blood red marks, usually in a spider or branch like pattern. They're caused by either skin trauma, like squeezing a pimple with too much force, intense microdermabrasion or even sneezing, or by excessive dilation of the blood vessels from taking a hot showers, being in the cold wintry air, eating spicy foods, exercising or drinking alcohol. Capillary walls are very elastic and blood vessels can lose their ability to contract if they are frequently dilated, causing them to remain enlarged. Usually found on fine skin textures, often affecting large areas of the face indicating sensitivity or thin skin. Response firstly to stimulation. Ruptured blood vessels assume a line-like appearance in surface tissues, can become bullous and blue in colour, congestion in the blood vessels of the area. Any skin type, whether it's oily, normal or dry, can take on the appearance of having large open pores. These may give your skin a dull appearance, particularly if they're clogged with dirt, bacteria, oil or dead skin cells can be a cosmetic issue for some people who do not like the way their skin looks. In adolescents and in adults who are prone to acne, open pores may become clogged, turning into blackheads or whiteheads. Aging skin containing less collagen 
may also take on the appearance of having larger open pores, which might also cause concern. More often noticed in people who complain of oily and problematic skin, some factors contribute to the intensification of visibility of the skin pores, UV rays, incorrect daily care, abuse of aggressive therapies, use of some drugs. To prevent enlarged pores, sun protection, makeup removal daily, use of moisturising products selected for the type of the skin. Blackheads and whiteheads are slightly raised bumps that are caused by oil, dead skin cells and bacteria built up that blocks up your pores. A blackhead is an open comedone as opposed to a whitehead which is a closed comedone. As it is not dirt in there, it's skin debris and oil. It's essentially a clogged pore with skin debris settling down within it. When this environment becomes very positive for bacteria to flourish, namely Propionobacterium, which is your PP acnes, it can help to promote acne. Milia is often mistaken for whiteheads, but in fact milia are actually carnalized filled cysts that form just under the skin looking like white or yellowish bumps on the surface. Nicknamed milk spots, milia is commonly associated with newborn babies but occurs in children and adults. Most commonly they occur due to dead skin build up and getting trapped in the pores near the surface of the skin. If the build up doesn't get expelled naturally it can become a small cyst. Most common in dry skins often occurs on the bicolaris oculine muscle area and between the eyebrows. Can also form after injury like sunburn on the face, shoulders and are sometimes widespread. Papules and pustules are larger bumps that are caused when blocked pores become irritated. Papules are hard, raised bumps that might be tender to touch. Pustules, which are often confused with whiteheads, are topped with white or yellow pus filled lesions and are red at the base. Post inflammatory hyperpigmentation and hypopigmentation result from irritated, inflamed, or injured skin. PIH is harmless and does not need any treatment. The skin heals and returns to its normal colour within six months in most people, but it might sometimes take longer. Treating the causes of the skin irritation and inflammation will help prevent PIH from returning. Hypopigmentation is uneven patches in skin tone, lighter than the surrounding due to the lack of melanin in the area. It can be acquired or congenital. Pediculosis is an infestation of the hairy parts of the body or clothing. The crawling stages of this insect feed on human blood, which can result in severe itching. Headlights are usually located on the scalp, crab lights in the pubic area and body lights along seams of clothing. Pediculosis may be divided into the following types. Pediculosis capus, corpus and pubis. Pedicularis capus, lice lay their eggs, also known as nits, near the base of the hair causes intensing itching and secondary infection. Transmitted through the use of infected combs, brushes, hats and other personal items. Pediculosis corpus, infestation of the body lice, intense itching, causes from the bite can bring secondary infection caused by scratching, transmitted by clothes. Scabies is spread by prolonged skin-to-skin -skin contact with a person who has scabies. Scabies sometimes also can be spread by contact with such items as clothing, bedding or towels and have been used by a person with scabies. It's highly contagious, caused by infestations of itchy mites. Mites burrow under the skin and lay eggs. They hatch and burrow further usually occurs on the hands and wrists, also the forearms, underarms, waist, inner thighs, buttocks and ankles. It gives an itching sensation. Atopic eczema is the most common form of eczema, a condition that causes the skin to become itchy, dry and cracked. It is more common in children, often developing from their first birthday, but it may also develop for the first time in adults. 
Our skin is home to millions of bacteria, fungi and viruses that compose the skin's microbiota, which is the genetic material of all microbes, bacteria, fungi, etc. It may be chronic, it can relapse, non-infectious and it's not contagious. Most often begins in childhood. It's not fully understood, can be genetic factors. T lymphocytes in the immune system may be dysfunctional. Features of this skin disorder may include excessive dryness, follicular keratosis, smaller sebaceous glands. Triggers may include diet and or stress. Symptoms may include dry skin, itching, which may be severe, especially at night, red to brownish grey patches, especially on the hands, feet, ankles, wrists, neck, upper chest, eyelids, inside the bend of the elbows and knees, and in infants, the face and scalp. Small raised bumps, which may leak fluid and crust over when scratched. The skin of the face is dry in central part, pale and peeling off. Grey brown patches on the side of the neck, looking like dirty neck, dryness and peeling of the lips. Skin inflammation cracks crusts at the junction of the earlobe with the neck. Subjective symptoms, skin itchiness leading to blistering due to scratching. Atopic dermatitis is a condition that makes your skin red and itchy. It's common in children, but can occur at any age. It's long lasting and tends to flare up. It may be accompanied by asthma and hay fever. No cure has been found. It's an inflammatory skin disorder that may result from infection or allergy. It might be acute with swelling and redness. It may be chronic over the length of time with the results of thick and skin with lead reappearance. There are different types. Contact dermatitis, exfoliate, occupational industry dermatitis, from sensation, traumatic, or varicose dermatitis. Varicose dermatitis or varicose eczema is a kind of eczema, a skin disorder, that can occur in people who have varicose veins. It happens because of poor circulation. It is usually affects the lower legs and sores may develop. Psoriasis is a skin disease that causes red, itchy, scaly patches, most commonly on the knees, elbows, trunk and scalp. It is a common long-term chronic disease with no cure. It tends to go through cycles, flaring up for a few weeks or months, then subsiding for a while or going into remission. It is a chronic inflammatory skin disease characterized by an increased proliferation of the epidermis. Lumps of reddish color clearly demarcated form that surrounding the skin covered with silver scales and accompanied by severe itching. After scratching the surface, a shiny layer may appear. Bleeding may occur caused by a stronger scratching of the skin eruptions. Development of lesions at the sides of the trauma. Lesions can affect all areas of the body, but most often occur on the elbows, knees and hairy skin of the head. Lesions on the nails may appear, pinpointed depressions. Separation of the nail and the free edge of the matrix. Veruca vulgaris are common warts which are caused by infection with human papilloma virus. Such warts can develop anywhere on the skin and frequently appear on the cuticle, the skin at the base of the nail, and sometimes the area beneath the nail. Nail biting can spread this infection. They are popular lesions with hyperkeratinized surfaces, infection through contact with a sick person or infected object, can be single or multiple can stay on the skin for several months or go away on their own. Usually found on the hands and fingers. New lesions can occur from self-transportation of the virus. A plantar wart or veruca is a wart occurring on the bottom of the foot or toes. Its colour is typically similar to that of the skin. Small black dots often occur on the surface. 
one or more may occur in an area. They may result in pain with pressure, such that walking is difficult. There are two types, deep and painful follicular changes that grow inwards, few and very infectious. Popular lesions appearing more superficially on the soles, usually confluent and non-painful. Herpes simplex, also known as a cold sore, is a virus and is contagious and can be transmitted from person to person through direct contact. Children will often contact HSV1 from early contact with an adult who has had an infection. They then carry the virus with them for the rest of their lives. You may see tiny bubbles they may form and may crust. You may have a burning sensation or slight pain. The course lasts 6 to 10 days and is characterised by its relapse. They appear on the face, lips or a mucosa and around the genital area. Highly contagious when active. Herplex zoster, also known as shingles. Anyone who gets shingles has had a case of chickenpox first, often decades earlier. These two conditions come from the same virus called varicella zoster. Chickenpox causes itchy blisters that might start on your back, chest and face and spread to the rest of your body. Shingles, however, is a rash with shooting pain. It usually shows up on one side of your body. The rash turns into red, fluid-filled blisters. They usually dry out and crust over within 7 to 10 days. It's characterised by vesicles that are permanent over the sebum content. Blisters can be clustered or scattered within the affected skin. It can be painful. Often located on the face, the forehead, eye area and trunk, mainly the chest. Can affect the nerves on the face and can cause serious damage to the eyesight. May be accompanied by neuralgia even several months after the lesions has resolved. Acne vulgaris is the formation of comedones, papules, pustules, nodules and or cysts as a result of obstruction and inflammation of the pilus sebaceous units, the hair follicles and their accompanying sebaceous glands. It develops on the face and upper trunk. It most often affects adolescents, mainly caused by overgrowth of sebaceous glands and increased production of sebum, hyperkeratosis of the ducts of the sebaceous glands. It can be from bacterial, hormonal, your diet, stress and medications characterised by increased oiliness, seborrhea. Post-inflammatory changes may include atrophic scars, hypertrophic scars and discoloration. And it's not contagious. Impetigo is a common and highly contagious skin infection that mainly affects infants and young children. It usually appears as reddish sores on the face especially around the nose and mouth and on the hands and the feet and limbs. Over about a week, the sores burst and develop honey-coloured crusts. Rosacea usually causes a persistent redness in the central part of your face. Small blood vessels on your nose and cheeks often swell and become visible. Many people with rosacea also develop pimples on their face that resemble acne. These bumps sometimes contain pus. It's chronic disease of unknown cause, characterised by erythema with inflamed papules and pustules, although scarring is not present. Skin looks tense, shiny with broken capillaries. Seborrhea is not present. Usually confined to the face, it spreads onto bald scalps and rarely onto the upper arms. Usually affects middle-aged elderly people. Triggered by many factors to include stress, weather, diet, alcohol, spicy foods, etc. A boil is a skin infection that starts in a hair follicle or oil gland. At first, the skin turns red in the area of the infection and the tender lump develops. 
after four to seven days, the lump starts turning white as pus collects under the skin. You can get a boil when bacteria enters the skin through cuts and grazes. Your immune system then sends infection fighting white blood cells to kill the bacteria. May cause painful swelling. May be a complication of acne in adolescence. Remains localised and is very painful. Folliculitis is a common skin condition in which hair follicles become inflamed. It's usually caused by a bacterial or fungal infection. At first it may look like small red bumps or white headed pimples around the hair follicles, the tiny pockets from which each hair grows. If folliculitis goes untreated, it may result in serious or deep infections that may spread or cause permanent scarring, cellulitis or even enter the bloodstream and become life-threatening. Usually occurs on the sides where the hair follicles are damaged by friction or shaving, or there is a blockage of the follicle. Can also be caused by excessive sweating. Vertiligo, also called leukoderma, is a condition in which there is a development of milky white patches on the skin. Anyone can get this skin disorder. Vertiligo sometimes runs in families, but the inheritance pattern is complex since multiple causative factors are involved. About one-fifth of people with this condition have at least one close relative who is also affected. Characterised by complete loss of melanocytes in the places of discoloration, sharply defined varies in size from small to large, often irregular contours. The most common occurs on the face, feet, neck, groin area and back. People with albinism have little to no pigment in all of their skin and their disorder directly affects their eyes. People with vertiligo start life with normal pigment in their skin and only lose pigment in certain patchy areas. Albinism is a hereditary disorder resulting in a lack of melanocytes in the skin, hair and eyes. The scoloured skin with a high risk of cancer due to UV radiation. Characteristics may include white hair including facial hair. Eyes may be translucent and clear. Photophobia and possible blindness. The difference between melasma and cloasma is melasma by definition is the mask of pregnancy. Cloasma is the same thing in a non-pregnant woman. In reality, the conditions are the same. It's a pigmentation disorder of the facial skin that appears after UV exposure. Affects pregnant women or who have taken the contraceptive pill, or someone with hormonal disorders. It occurs on the cheeks, forehead, upper lip, nose and mandible. Might take a form of stains with irregular frayed coffee or dark brown borders, and it can be located in areas of sun exposure. Effulides, also known as freckles, form as a result of sun exposure and sunburns. They can appear on anyone who doesn't protect themselves from UV rays. They show up on your face, the back of your hands and upper body. This type tends to be most common amongst people with lighter skin tones and hair colour. They're small golden or brown spots. Local increase of melanin produced by unchanged number of melanocytes. Mainly appear in childhood, may disappear in old age darkened under the influence of UV radiation and pale in winter months, and they're genetically determined. Lenticles and effulides are important pigmentation characteristics observed in humans. Both are affected by sunlight. Effulides are largely genetically determined, but induced by sunlight whereas lenticles are induced by sun exposure and photo damage of the skin. Lenticles lesions are located on the exposure part of the body subjected to chronic UV radiation. Diameters form 
a few millimeters to several centimeters. Dark brown color, regular or irregular edges. Papilloma, also called moles, are common skin type of growth. They often appear as small dark brown spots and are caused by clusters of pigmented cells. Moles generally appear during childhood and adolescence. Most people have 10 to 40 moles, some of which may change in appearance or fade away over time. They vary in size, colour and vascular appearance. Common occurrence on the face and body, there are two types. Sessile moles, which are flat moles, and pedunculated, which raise above the surface. Navier, also known as burnt marks, are a type of pigmented burnt mark that appears at birth or during a baby's first year. These occur in 1-2% to of the population. These moles are frequently found on the trunk or limbs, although they can appear anywhere on the body. There are coloured marks on the skin. Most are harmless and disappear without treatment. Vascular burnt marks occur if blood vessels in a particular area do not form the way it should. Pigmentated burnt marks occur when there is an overabundance of pigmented cells in one area. A port wine stain is a discoloration of the human skin caused by abnormal formation of small blood vessels under the skin can occur anywhere on the body but often found on the face and neck may start out as a pink and red and turn dark red or purple they do not fade over time the skin may also become very dry thick or pebbled like in texture it is a capillary malformation seen at birth won't go away on their own but they can be treated Laser therapies can make many port white stains much less noticeable by shrinking blood vessels in the birth mark and fading it. Leukoderma is an autoimmune disorder within the immune system of the body and attacks the healthy cells and in turn starts affecting the body. Vertiligo gets characterized by smooth white patches on the skin. It is an autoimmune disorder characterized by the destruction of pigment producing cells. Although there is no cure for vertiligo, there are several treatments available. Albinism is a rare inherited disorder caused by a lack of melanin producing enzymes. People with albinism have a defective gene that prevents the body from producing melanin. Albinism cannot be cured. Urticaria, also known as a hive, occurs when a trigger causes high levels of histamine and other chemical messengers to be released in the skin. These substances cause the blood vessels in the affected area of the skin to open up, often resulting in redness or pinkness, and become leaky. It's a type of skin rash noticeable for pale red, itchy bumps, may also cause burning or stinging sensation, frequently caused by an allergic reaction. However, there are many non-allergic causes. UV damage to sunburn is a form of radiation burn of living tissue, resulting from overexposure to UV radiation. UVB rays are responsible for producing sunburn. The UVB rays also play the greatest role in causing skin cancers, including the deadly black mold from the skin cancer malignant melanoma. UVA rays also play a role in skin cancer formation. An excess of UV radiation can be life-threatening and is the leading cause of skin cancer. Analogy is a bad reaction to a particular food or substance in the environment. Most allergens are not harmful and have no effect on people who are not allergic. Popular allergens may include pollen, house dust mites, moles, pets, nuts, fruits, latex, etc. Develops when the body's immune system reacts to an allergen as taught it as a threat. It produces antibodies to fight off the allergen. Next, the person comes into contact with the allergen 
and the body releases more antibodies. You may experience asthma, eczema and hay fever. The most common signs of symptoms of an allergic reaction include cough, difficulty or irregular breathing, wheezing, itchy throat or mouth, difficulty in swallowing, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pains and diarrhea. You may also experience itchiness, red bumps or welts on the skin and the skin may appear red. With early detection and treatment, almost all basal cell carcinomas can be successfully removed without complications. Look out for any new changing or unusual skin growths so you can spot the skin cancers like BCC when they are easiest to treat and cure. Check for BCCs when your skin is most exposed to the sun, especially the face, ears, neck, scalp, chest, shoulders and back. But remember that they can occur anywhere on the body. They are the most common skin cancer, slow growing and rarely spread anywhere else in the body, can appear in different sizes and shapes. Large or neglected BCCs can cause extensive local invasion and disfigurement. There are different types of basal cell carcinomas and a persistent non-healing sore. An open sore that does not heal and may bleed, ooze or crust. The sore might persist for weeks or appear to heal and then come back. A reddish patch or irritated area on the face, chest, shoulder, arm or legs that may crust, itch, hurt or cause no discomfort. A shiny bump or nodule that is pearly or clear pink, red or white. The bump can also be tan, black or brown, especially in dark skinned people and can be mistaken for a normal mole. A small pink growth with a slightly raised rolled edge and crusted indentation in the centre that may develop tiny surface blood vessels over time. And a scar like area that is flat white, yellow or waxy in colour. The skin appears shiny and taunt often with poorly defined borders. Squamous cells are found throughout the human body. These cells line organs such as the lungs, throat and thyroid. We also have squamous cells in our skin. The job of squamous cells is to protect what lies beneath. In our skin, these cells sit near the surface, protecting the tissue beneath. Anywhere we have squamous cells, we can develop a type of cancer called squamous cell carcinoma. In the skin, this cancer is usually not life threatening. It tends to grow slowly, but it can grow deep. When the cancer grows deep, it can injure nerves, blood vessels and anything else in its path. As the cancer cells pile up, a large tumour can form. It's the second most common malignant of the skin often located on the face, neck, ears, lips and forearms. It varies in size, can cause discomfort and become disfiguring. Most people who develop this skin cancer have fair skin that they seldom protected with sunscreen or sun protective clothing. Before developing the skin cancer, they tend to notice signs of sun damage on their skin such as age spots, patches of discoloured skin and deep wrinkles. Anyone can develop squamous cell carcinoma. While anyone can develop the skin cancer, you have a greater risk if you live with a transplanted organ or use tanning beds or have fair skin that you seldom protect from the sun. Typically appears as a persistent thick rough scaly patches that can bleed if bumped, scratched or scraped often look like warts, small hard white skin coloured lumps, a persistent scaly red patch with irregular borders, an elevated growth with a central depression and an open sore that bleeds and crusts. Melanoma, also known as malignant melanoma, is a type of skin cancer that develops from the pigment producing cells known as melanocytes. Melanomas typically occur in the skin but may rarely occur in the mouth, intestines or eye. 
It is usually curable when detected and treated early. Once melanoma has spread deeper into the skin or other parts of the body, it becomes more difficult to treat and can be deadly. It is the most dangerous type of skin cancer, often spreads to internal organs, can appear anywhere on the body, most commonly occurs as a new spot or mole, or as an existing spot or mole that changes in colour, shape or size. Childhood exposure to the sun is an important factor, and fair type of skin is in a higher risk. The most common sign of melanoma is the appearance of a new mole or a change in an existing mole. This can occur anywhere on the body, but the most commonly affected areas are the back in men and legs in women. Melanomas are uncommon in areas which are protected from sun exposure, such as the buttocks and the scalp. In most cases, melanomas have an irregular shape and are more than one colour. The mole may also be larger than normal and can sometimes be itchy or bleed. Look out for a mole which changes progressively in shape, size and or colour. Look for A, asymmetry, B, border, uneven, irregular, ragged or half blurred, undefined edges. C, for colour, changes are various throughout. D, for diameter, larger than 6 mm but can also be smaller. E for evolving, changes in new or existing mole over variable time is the biggest indicator of melanoma. The skin is made of a variety of cells, many of which are in constant motion. Round basal cells below the surface flatten as they rise to replace dead flake and squamous cells on the surface. Melanocytes tan the skin in the sunlight and Merkel cells give the skin the ability to sense touch. When these cells become damaged, they may develop into skin cancer. All skin cancers are serious and should be treated promptly. But skin cancer types, treatment options and prognosis vary widely depending on the types of cells affected. Let's review. The process of skin analysis involves delving deep into your skin's history and taking the skin's data of the following sebum, pores, keratin, impurities, spots, moisture and wrinkles. Look, feel, ask, listen, look for damage or condition caused by sun exposure. The type of skin is determined by genetics, although it will also be affected by other factors and can change with time. Based on these characteristics, there are four types of healthy skin. Normal, dry, oily, combination, both oily and dry, all can have sensitivity. Skin disorders vary greatly in symptoms and severity. They can be temporary or permanent and may be painless or painful. Some have situational causes, while others may be genetic. Some skin conditions are minor and others can be life-threatening. If you don't know or you're unsure what something is, don't treat it. While most skin disorders are minor, others can indicate a more serious issue. In some cases, a referral may be necessary. Your skin is the organ that comes into contact with the rest of the world. It holds bodily fluids in, preventing dehydration and keeps harmful microbes out. Without it, we would get infections. Your skin is full of nerve endings and help you feel things like heat, cold and pain. No matter how you think of it, your skin is very important. It covers and protects everything inside and out. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for listening.